about 45 million pounds of chips in a quarter. That equates to about 200 million pounds of potatoes, which is quite a few. What's interesting with M&T is, is they're a small town bank, and as we've grown, they've also grown with us. They've got the resources that you would need in order to go big, but they also have that friendly local community feel so that it makes it seem easier than it probably is. Hello, welcome to Candidates Upfront. This series of interviews with candidates on the November 3rd general election ballot is brought to you by Berks Community Television and the League of Women Voters of Berks County. Both organizations are nonpartisan. That means we never support candidates nor political parties. And both organizations consider it their mission to provide voters with information about each election. I'm Judith Crane, a member of the League. First, if you're not registered to vote, go to votespa.com to register. Votespa.com comes in English and Spanish. You have until October 19th to register, but the smart thing is, do it now. And if you do not want to stand in line on Election Day, apply for a mail-in ballot. Again, go to votespa.com and do it now. And if you leave them your email address, they will keep track of where your ballot is and send you emails so you're constantly updated. Now, when your ballot arrives, get the information you need on the candidates, watching programs like this or going to their websites, so you can make your decision. And once you've made it, mail it back right away. We help our Berks County Election Systems Office handle this election smoothly if we are timely. Now, if you choose to go to your polling place on Election Day, polls are open from 7 in the morning till 8 at night. This year, we will vote for Pennsylvania Attorney General, Auditor General, and Treasurer. We will also elect representatives to the U.S. Congress, to the Pennsylvania Senate, and to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. The League and BCTV invited all but the statewide candidates to be interviewed. Some did not reply some declined. Those who agreed will be asked the same questions in the same order with the same time limits as others running for the same office. These interviews will be available on BCTV's webpage and YouTube channel. And if you watch the interviews of two competing candidates, you can compare their answers to make your decision on how you will vote. Oops, I'm missing a page. One second. Here we go. This interview is for United States Representative in Congress in the 9th District. And I think we have a map to pull up. There we go. This district is northern Berks County and the largest part geographically of our county. Congress is the legislative branch of our national government. It has two houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Representatives serve a two-year term. They propose and pass federal laws. The number of voting representatives in the House is fixed by law at no more than 435, proportionately representing the population of the 50 states. Pennsylvania currently has 18 representatives. The salary for a U.S. representative is $174,000 plus benefits and expenses. The two candidates in the 9th District are Gary Wegman, the Democrat, and Dan Muser, the Republican. This interview is with Dan Muser. He is the incumbent. Welcome, Mr. Muser. Thank you. Our first question for you is, <clears throat> why do you want to serve in Congress, and what are your qualifications for this position? Well, it has been my honor to represent the people of Pennsylvania's ninth over the last two years, and I do, in fact, uh, very much want to continue uh, to represent the ninth congressional I am very interested in using my background and skills to help advance our country 
Uh, so uh, so we, uh, we, we grow our economy uh, and stay strong as a nation. I am very interested in advancing uh, my community, uh, all the cities and uh, throughout uh, the Ninth Congressional in revitalizing and uh, cr uh, job creation uh, throughout the Ninth Congressional. There's some great things that we could do, and, and I think Pennsylvania is very well positioned uh, to, um, uh, to, to have uh, a great future. Um, my background, I also think I'm an effective member of Congress due to my, my experience and background. I was in business for 25 years, helped grow a small business into a large business, and served as the Secretary of Revenue for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Along with raising my family, I think of those life experiences have prepared me well. What are the three most important things that you want to accomplish? Well, what's very important is that we first and foremost uh, have a strong economy. I do work with uh, President Trump and largely the, the Republican leadership and Democrats on occasion as well uh, to assure that we maintain a competitive tax rate, that we have the type of regulatory reform we need. We want to lower the cost of, of, of quality health care. Uh, we want to keep our domestic energy um, uh, available and at, and at low, low prices. Uh, and we, we need to be focused on, on transportation infrastructure. But largely what I'm about and my three focuses are to uh, work on the macros of making uh, uh, America first, uh, not America alone, but America first, that we make our country as strong as possible, uh, that we work on Pennsylvania uh, so as we are an attractive place for businesses to, to want to uh, grow and want to move here. Uh, and I care about my constituents uh, extremely much. We, uh, we have great constituent services, and those will continue. The pandemic continues. Has our federal government responded appropriately? <clears throat> Should it do more? Please explain your feelings. Sure. Well, this crisis has been unprecedented, and it's been an incredible challenge. I, I, my heart goes out, as we all do, to those that have lost their lives and families that have been so affected uh, by this. My heart also goes out to the livelihoods that have been lo lost and suffered, uh, the small businesses that were, uh, that were uh, asked to close down and, in some cases, forced to shut down. I think President Trump uh, handled the uh, the situation, uh, the severe crisis, in a uh, in a strong manner. Uh, we we came out. We we did prohibit uh, those uh, coming from China uh, to travel to the United States. Uh, we did engage businesses and, and production facilities in the PPE development, uh, and we encouraged through CDC a strong uh, health and safety measures. The president worked in a very inclusionary manner. Uh, which brought in all industry to ask how we can best do this and survive with, with our economy. Unfortunately, I don't think that was done on a, uh, on a state level but by our governor. African Americans, Latinos, and other minorities have dis been disproportionately affected by COVID-19. What do you see as the explanation for this disparity, and what remedies would you propose? Well, uh, there were certain groups that were certainly more affected than others. Uh, the group most affected by this were um, our older population and those with underlying conditions. Uh, so that was um, uh, that. That frankly should have been uh, understood earlier because the data was was clear very early on uh, that those would be most vulnerable to uh, to this virus. And yes, it is a shame, and um, that uh, minorities. Uh, uh, Latinos, uh, African Americans uh, seem to have a larger percentage. And, you know, what we, what we have to do is what we do for all citizens. We need to make our health and safety clear and understood, how to handle things once someone feels symptoms uh, that you do need to uh, confine immediately and get tested. Uh, sure, we need to ramp up the testing more. Uh, Again, this was unprecedented, so the testing necessarily wasn't there at the onset, uh, but is available today. We need the hospitals. I pa helped pass bills that assured that the hospitals were ready and made available for all, all groups of our citizens. Is our health system as a whole working well, or does it need change? And if you feel it needs change, would you advocate minor changes or major changes? Yeah, I think our health care system uh, needs uh, relatively large changes and, and improvements. We, um, our goal should be to provide choice, to provide quality care, 
and make certain that it's affordable and absolutely accessible. Uh, we've gone in the wrong direction, frankly, by, by making a government run our health care and take control of health care uh, through, through Obamacare and through other means was a mistake. Obamacare was largely an ex expansion of Medicaid, and that was the least favorable of our health care uh, systems. So what we, what we need to do is we need to create more competition. Uh, we need to uh, allow choice. Uh, we need to do something. We need to remove antitrust from insurance companies, something known as the McGarren-Ferguson that, that passed years back. I'm in favor of lifting, so there is no longer antitrust. Um, but we need to assure that, that quality health care is available uh, in a very affordable way and accessible for all of our citizens. And we absolutely must keep pre-existing conditions um, it w somebody will not lose their health care for pre-existing conditions. And Medicare needs to stay strong as well. Two-part question. Do you, supporting allow, so do you support allowing Medicare to negotiate prices directly with drug manufacturers? And what would your plan be to lower prescription drug prices? Well, well thank you. The, the President has been very focused here. And in fact, the President largely is taking on Big Pharma, and I, and I support uh, his actions. We've removed the gag order, which was amazing, that was still in effect, that wouldn't let uh, drug stores in, inform uh, uh, customers of, their, of, of the prices of generics versus, uh, versus name brand drugs. Uh, I've signed on to quite a bit of legislation for the purpose of lowering uh, prescription drug costs. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the Democrat majority uh, has, has not been able to get that done, has not ended surprise billing, which is other, another big issue. And yes, a matter of fact, I am for, I'm for what the president is working on right now, getting most favored nation pricing uh, for pharmaceuticals, which would enormously lower the costs. And yes, I don't see any reason why Medicare should not be negotiating directly with uh, with pharmaceutical companies. The problem is, however, the Democrat majority under Nancy Pelosi tried to pass something like that, but it was really a, a complete takeover of the pharmaceutical industry and really would have been disastrous. What should be done to prevent evictions and address homelessness during the pandemic? Well, look, we're, we're, we're a, a wealthy society, but we're, uh, we, we uh, certainly don't have un unlimited wealth. Uh, we have been passing foreclosure extensions, for instance, in, uh, in the last two CARES Acts that passed, and, I, and I'm certainly favorable to that, as is the president, as, as are Republicans. Um, we we uh, need to, to provide the type of funding that we did pass in the CARES Act so counties uh, could utilize funds to be looking after uh, and, and providing shelters uh, as, as needed. You know, the more local you get to a situation, the better. Uh, the federal government making such decisions is, is the wrong way to go. We should provide the funding and have it allocated properly for the counties uh, so they can care for those that, uh, that are in such need. Do you favor any changes to Social Security, either the benefits or how we fund it? Explain. Well, I, I think Social Security is incredibly important for a large majority of our citizens uh, that have worked for years. People for 30, 35, 40 years pay into it at a, at, at, at a total of 6.2%, including their, uh, their um, or I think it's 6.6%, .6%, my apologies, including their, their, their employer uh, part of it. So uh, Social Security needs to be there. Uh, people make the investment, they pay into it, and it will be there. It will be secured. I, I, I don't think a, a Republican or a Democrat um, is, is looking at, looking at, at cutting it. Uh, we, uh, Med Medicare, the same thing. You know, you hear in the news these days that because the president is proposing a payroll tax deduction that somehow that's going to affect our Social Security. It's, it's, it's nonsense. You know, it's more politicizing uh, uh, plans that have been put into effect by other presidents several times. So it's, it's, it's phony baloney uh, scare tactics uh, being put out on, on, uh, uh, on, on frankly, on, on the Democrat presidential uh, candidates' uh, uh, TV commercials. Should the federal minimum wage be increased? Why or why not, and how much? 
Well, I'm for uh, maximum wage, right? I mean, we want people to earn as much as they possibly can. This America, we need to drive the American dream. And that comes from the private sector. The American dream comes from the private sector. It doesn't come from government. So government is probably the biggest hindrance to, uh, to wage increases uh, due to the regulations and the overtaxation that has taken place. We have an opportunity in the United States to still have, even though with corona and this terrible year that we've been through, to have an incredible uh, American decade. And that's another reason that I'm very excited about, about the, the future of, of, of being in Congress. But as far as the minimum wage goes, we want that to be driven uh, by, the, by the private sector, uh, not by uh, government decisions on who should receive what, because they can't possibly get it right. And frankly, uh, uh, Washington usually doesn't get it right, folks. That's why we have the Constitution and we have the, the Tenth Amendment. Um, equal pay for equal work law was passed in 19 1963. Yet there remains a wage gap between males and females and between majority and minority populations. Does more need to be done? Explain. Well, we, we need to pay attention to it. Um, we need to uh, illuminate if where that, that occurs. We need to advocate strongly as leaders, and, and we are uh, public servants, and I work for the people, uh, but we are uh, voted into leadership positions. So yes, we need to voice that uh, e e um, equitable pay and, and incomes for all people based upon their, uh, their, 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 what they deserve and, and uh, assure that it is equal uh, for a, 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 a man, a woman, uh, um, uh, any, any uh, minority, of course. So, but when you start bringing in, and there are laws, there are many laws that need to continue to be enforced uh, that, that are there to assure this. And I voted for some. Uh, in, in the past Congress, uh, wherever we thought there might be a blind spot. But uh, businesses, any good business, uh, should never engage in such practice. And, uh, and where they do, uh, there's certainly uh, enough lawyers out there to, uh, to, to, to correct that. Uh, but what's most important is that we have fair laws and, frankly, and, 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 and uh, justice and equity for all. What federal policies will you pursue to provide equity and opportunity for all Americans, including the many groups that have been historically disadvantaged? Well, you know, again, I, 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 want, I want America to be very meaningful for all people. I, I want uh, all to have equal opportunity. Um, uh, my, my whole life, my adult life anyway, uh, my, 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 my charitable giving has always been for young people. I want kids. Uh, in preschool, uh, kindergarten, older, to to have equal shot at the at the American dream as any other. I've been a big proponent of, of Head Start uh, for, for 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 many years, and that needs to continue. We we need to have access to skills development and and, and career and technical developments as well as as well as higher education. We need to assure that our schools are providing equal education and the same sort of devices and tools and technology that any school has. And, and we need to do that, we, we need to do that in, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, and I think for the most part that has occurred. Uh, but we, we just need to continue to keep our eye on it and, and, and press forward and, and work that, that we, we truly are the land of opportunity for all. How do we avoid tariff wars and open new markets for American businesses and farmers? Well, it's a very important question. And we, first off, we need to review, as President Trump has done and, and I've done, review the uh, trade agreements that exist throughout uh, the world and see where they're unfair. And frankly, over the last 20 years, uh, they've become, particularly the last 12 years, they've become incredibly unfair, as most have, have, have seen in the news. And President Trump uh, and uh, Republicans in Congress are, are addressing that. Uh, we saw that we did write a new trade agreement uh, with China, where the the level of unfairness was was unbelievable, uh, and and got a lot worse during the Obama and Biden days. Um, we we passed the USMCA finally. Uh, the USMCA should have been passed a year and a half ago, and it was just passed um, uh, recently. 
Uh, for some reason, Speaker Pelosi decided that she didn't want to pass the USMCA uh, because she so thought that that would be a victory for the president. There was no other reason for it, because all the votes were there. Uh, plenty of Democrats were going to vote for it because their constituents wanted it. So free trade, reciprocal trade is essential. And with President Trump, we will continue to, to engage in, in free and reciprocal and search for 0% tariffs. And if we do that, that will be one of the most important things we could do to assure that we have an incredible American decade. We're, we're probably running over our time frame. So is it all right with you if we go to 50 seconds so we get in all the questions? I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, of course. Okay. What is your plan to upgrade and maintain infrastructure, and how would you fund it? Very important. It's a core function of government. I've actually introduced a bill, both from the federal side and the state side. I've introduced a bill known as the Infrastructure Bank for America, uh, which would bring in capital funding, would be a, um, a privately owned uh, uh, banking uh, facility uh, that would work with states and work with municipalities and provide funding for um, large-scale infrastructure projects. Uh, you know, in this day and age, with the technology that's available, we can expand highways, we can expand roads. There are many revenue-generating projects that can be accomplished. But again, uh, the taxpayer dollars have to be there as well. It's a core function of government. We need to modernize Pennsylvania. We need to modernize our country. The U.S. Voting Rights Act of 1965 allowed the Justice Department to review proposed state laws to assure that no citizen would be deprived of their vote. Significant portions have been dismantled or expired and not reinstated. Would you reinstate the 1965 Voting Rights Act? Well, I'd have to re review that, but what I'm most interested in is that every citizen gets one vote. And the idea of suppressing vote or making it difficult to vote, I think, is, um, is, is close to treasonous. Uh, we are a uh, we are we are a Democrat republic. Uh, we must have people have uh, uh, easy access to vote, um, and that's uh, really uh, probably our, our our most core core principle. Now I will say, um, access to voting in the United States uh, has been has been good. Let's always work to improve it. In the last election, we had a, we had more of a turnout in the presidential election than ever before. Uh, Mail-in votes, as we, we've been hearing about, um, in just universal ballots being sent out is highly problematic uh, and will lead to uh, mistakes and, 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 and likely fraud. Uh, but um, absentee ballots and solicited ballots uh, should be absolutely made available so we assure one citizen, one vote. Videos of police brutality have brought racism to the forefront of discussions. What role can federal law play to end police brutality and racism? Well, I, I think most people and a vast, vast majority of people appreciate that our police force are made up of good people that are truly there to protect and serve and, and, and are there for the people. Uh, nobody d dislikes a, a bad cop, if you will, more than a good cop. Uh, we've seen some actions of some bad cops. Uh, the Republicans have introduced a bill uh, from Senator Tim Scott called the Justice Act uh, that would have brought brought very sensible reforms to the police departments across the nation, federal uh, jurisdiction, and yet the Democrat majority repudiated it and would not, uh, did not, and voted it down in, in, uh, in the House. So we um, unfortunately didn't move the ball forward uh, from a federal standpoint, but it's very important that we continue to assure that we have justice for all and we have the best police possible. Uh, but the idea of defunding the police, as, as many in, uh, my colleagues in the Democrat caucus want to do, is, um, is, couldn't be more of a, of a mistake uh, if they tried. In your opinion, what are the causes of gun violence in our country? And what is the role of federal legislation? And we must stick to our time frames because we've got more questions and minutes okay. left. Sure. Well, we need to enforce the gun laws that exist, uh, that are on the books. Uh, we also need to appreciate that we have a Second Amendment uh, that uh, should not be disturbed. It is very important uh, that in, uh, in, in the United States that, that our Constitution be protected and that Americans' right to bear arms is, is not infringed. Um, you know, we have so many—we have police out there. We, we see with these riots taking place that— 
No amount of police are going to stop such riots. So people have the right to protect their private property. And just as, uh, frankly, you would have a, uh, a fire extinguisher in your house, even though there was a, a fire department, uh, you, you should have the right to, uh, to bear arms. We need to enforce the laws strenuously uh, in areas where gun violence is, is, is rampant. Agriculture accounts for about half of Berks County's economy. Our local farmers are adapting as much as possible to changes in the climate. Should the federal government address climate change to protect agriculture? And we're going to have to go to 30 seconds, I'm afraid. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I, I think that what we need to do is talk about climate change. And many businesses have engaged in many renewable energy projects. As a matter of fact, the United States is the only industrialized nation that over the last two years in a row, uh, carbon emissions has been reduced. Farmers are very aware of that. I consider myself a, a, a conservationist, uh, yet at the same time, we have to be sensible. What the Democrats have proposed, the Green New Deal, is very extreme, very far-reaching, and would be very damaging uh, to our economy and livelihoods. What, if any, steps should our nation take to reform current immigration policies? Well, uh, a lot of things, actually. And, and the president has tried. We have tried. First of all, we got to start with border security. Everything starts there. And then, and then from there, uh, we, can, we can have discussions on, on paths uh, to legality for uh, those who are here illegally, toward more extensive visas uh, for agriculture as well as service industries or any industry for that matter. There is a way to do it, but we have to have border security and it has to be controlled. The Democrats, once again, uh, refuse to work with the Republicans or the president when it comes to border security. People rely on the U.S. Postal Service. Do you think it should function on a strictly business model or as a public service? Explain. Well, uh, the Postal Service is, is, is very important, and I know it's been uh, controversial uh, recently. Uh, we Republicans are there. The Congress was there to provide any funding that the Post Office needed to perform in a, a level of excellence. Uh, so whether it's private or public, we need to assure that it does perform and deliver the mail and is there for people. And frankly, we've done that. We have increased our deficit due to the pandemic, and we have about 15 seconds okay. left. How do you suggest we dig ourselves out of this hole? Well, just like we grew out of our deficit after World War II, and we grew out of it uh, from, uh, from the 90s, pro-growth initiatives where America's economy grows and trade deals so we can sell the best products and the best food everywhere around the world, that will drive revenue. The best revenue creator is a job. The more job creation, that will bring the trade that will bring our deficit down. Thank you, Mr. Muser, and thank you for watching Candidates Up Front. about 45 million pounds of chips in a quarter. That equates to about 200 million pounds of potatoes, which is quite a few. What's interesting with M&T is, is they're a small town bank, and as we've grown, they've also grown with us. They've got the resources that you would need in order to go big, but they also have that friendly local community feel so that it makes it seem easier than it probably is.